Hey, good morning everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. You in the big city don't have to be too awfully concerned because you probably don't run into it too often. But out in the country, uh, we have a lot of people that actually have forced air wood-fired furnaces and they want to tie those into the ductwork of a regular fossil fuel furnace or of an electric air handler. So whenever you do that, you have to make provisions for controlling that air coming backwards down into the furnace, the wood-fired furnace, in the event you use an air conditioning or the other, the other brand of heat or the other style of heat. And you also want to make sure that in a power failure, uh, like we were subjected to sometimes a little more often out in the country than we want to, you need to make sure that the damper fails to the open position on the wood-fired plants. If you happen to have a big old rip-roaring fire and you lose power on a Saturday night, you know, at midnight, and you have it installed incorrectly and you lose power and the damper will spring to the closed position on the wood-fired furnace, you have a tendency to tremendously overheat the plenum and uh, and you can actually create a hazardous situation. So you have to make sure that you install a damper to where it fails to the open position on the wood-fired furnace. Now there's all kinds of other control stuff we have to talk about and we'll get around to it, but that'll be somewhat later. But right now what we're going to be doing, we're going to be building a damper assembly that's going to go on to the, in the supply air trunk line off of a, the wood-fired furnace and tying into the trunk line on an electric air handler that I've already got the, the uh, motorized dampers installed in the supply air plenum on that. This particular fitting is very simple that's going to be housing the, uh, the actual dampers. It's going to be the flanged portion that's going to come into the side of the supply air T on the electric air handler. So I'm going to have to have a flange that will slide over the top of the plenum, a reinforced double hem flange that will slide over the top of the plenum. And at the same time, it'll flare out to the two sides at 90 degrees where we can attach it right there. And then also downward at the bottom where we can attach it to the bottom of the plenum and snip it and bend it under and then screw into the bottom of the uh, supply trunk if necessary. It's going to be a simple little fitting. It's only going to be uh, 12 inches long and 8 by 20. And we have to fabricate the dampers and put the dampers inside with the bearing kits and the, and the linkage arms and all that. So we know we're going to have a flange and it's going to be a two-piece two piece fitting. So we know we're going to have a flange that's going to have to have a half inch double hem. So we can mark that. We know the fitting is 12 inches long so that'll be 13 inches from the edge and then one inch back through the S and drive. 13 inches from the edge, an inch back. We know it's going to be 8 by 20. So 8 plus 1 for the Pittsburgh is going to be 9. Mark that 9 inch on the 1 inch mark. You can do the same thing right here. Mark the 9 inch on the 1 inch line that's going to be here. 20 is the width, so we add 20 inches to that. Actually 20 plus a quarter, so we'll add 20 and 1 quarter to that. And here also 20 and 1 quarter on the 1 inch line. You don't have to mark this 9 inch, but I'm going to. That's the layout for one half of the duct. Okay, layout is complete on both of them. We've got them notched, ready for the flange, ready for the lock farmer, ready for the cross brake. So essentially this is nothing more than a flange takeoff off the side of a trunk line. And if you remember, I said it's going to be flanged, so we have a 90 degree flange around three sides, and the top has got a 180 degree safety hem across the very top to give rigidity across the very top of the uh, furnace where we may or may not be able to get to to put a screw in.
Now we have to go about the business with forming a pair of rotating dampers that will block off the vast majority of the airflow in this uh, in this trunk. Now as I make these dampers here, I'm trying to make it to where everything is going to be in alignment with the set of dampers that's in the electric air handler so that I can mount one actuator and then use a connecting rod or linkage to actuate the four dampers that are in the supplier plenum on the air handler and the two dampers that are going to be in the in this one here. Went ahead and cut uh, two blanks 19 and 3 quarter inches long because you want a little bit of play on each end. By the time you fold these things up on the outside edge, they're going to they're gonna shrink up about 3 quarters of an inch nominally. Might be a little more, might be a little less. It is still a little bit adjustable if they are a little bit wide and you can open them back up if you do kind of close them a little bit too far. But I'm going to start with four, uh, with 4 and 3 quarter inch material in order to make the folds on the outside edge to make that interlocking edge on the two dampers. This part's actually fairly simple. But you want to try to maintain accuracy if at all possible. Bring this up to 45 degrees. Actually, I'll go a little bit farther because it's uh, it'll spring back a little bit. Turn it over, invert it again to the half inch mark. Go to the 45 degrees again, a little bit beyond 45. Now, if it didn't have this bending bar on here, we could fold the other other part right here. But we're going to go to the box and pan and finish that up over there. Again, these are not going to be. 100% shut off. There's going to be a certain amount of linkage. Without a bending bar in here, it's much easier to get in here and do what it is that we need to do. The end result of your efforts should be an interlocking piece that when everything rotates, they'll interlock over the top of each other. And the starting out dimension should be very near the width of your duct, which is eight inches. So we have seven and 15 sixteenths, which is kind of tight. I may have to cut just a little bit, trim a little bit to clear the Pittsburghs and the two opposing corners for the Pittsburgh. But you'll see how this will rotate like this in order to open the airflow and then close to block airflow. Now we got to go about the business of finding the uh, 3 8 square rod. I went ahead and got the uh, 3 8 shaft and I drilled holes where they need to be so that they can mount perfectly in center of the actual dampers themselves. And I don't remember if I said to make sure that you mark the dead center of the, the metal before you fold it. That way you know exactly where center is so you can put your shaft right on that particular line. The reason that's critical is now you have to remember because we're going to use one actuator. We have to make sure that this operates in a clockwise to open manner just like the other damper is that this, the actuator is going to be connected to. So with these interlocked this away right here and the actuator powered from this end, you can see the overlap is this direction here. So that is facing, that's clockwise to open like we need it to do and counterclockwise to close. Now we have the opportunity to go ahead and bolt these guys together. And now that we've got the uh, the shafts bolted to the actual actuators, you can go ahead and look at it in the closed position right here and you'll be able to see that clockwise to open unlocks and allows air passage. Now if you take a look you can see a little bit of uh, daylight at the very bottom and at the very top. You're not concerned about the sides. There's not much we can do about the sides. But the top and the bottom, I'm going to show you how we solve that issue. It's another miniature bend that's going to rivet onto the duct. And when this latches down in there, it's going to come in contact and just hold right there in position. That'll block. There'll be one of those on the bottom and on the top. And that'll block probably 95% of the airflow going through the duct. Now, whenever the actuator is connected to the other set of dampers, there will be a rod that comes over and attaches to this, this swivel joint right here. And then that actuator will turn clockwise to open, which will go like this right here. And you can see change the position of the dampers. So when I get everything all adjusted, this is the way it will work right here. I still got to do a little tweaking, a little adjusting on this. Well, here it is, a motorized backdraft damper that's going to go on the wood furnace. All it needs is a little bit of adjusting, it'll be ready to install. This is going to be flange mounted to the side of the plenum, or the plenum T, on the electric air handler's supply air duct network, being delivered hot air 
from the wood furnace through this set of dampers. And again, these dampers will be wired to where they're spring open on a loss of power, just for safety reasons. Okay, this really wasn't a quick one, it really wasn't a simple one. Uh, it's a little bit involved, but you can see how you can do it. And you know what? This is Trackman 44, and I'm out of here, guys.